Audiobook Academy Biography Presents. Martin Robeson Delaney. As a physician and a newspaper editor, abolitionist Martin Robeson Delaney rose to prominence as one of the century's most important and successful anti-slavery activists. Which of the following is true about Martin Robeson Delaney? Slavery was a part of Martin Robeson Delaney's life and work. One of the first African Americans admitted to Harvard Medical School. He was a successful physician who used his position of authority in a number of abolitionist publications to teach people about slavery's problems. Civil War service followed. Childhood. When Martin Robeson Delaney was born in Charlestown, Virginia, on May 6, 1812, he was a free African-American man. According to family reports, Delaney was the son of a slave and the grandchild of a royal. Although all of his grandparents had been transported over from Africa to serve as slaves, it is said that the father of his father was a tribal head and the father of his mother was a Mandingo prince. As a result of his mother Patty's freedom, she worked as a seamstress while her husband Samuel was a shackled carpenter. Virginia was a slave state and Patty was reported to the sheriff for teaching her children to read and write from the New York Primer for spelling and reading, which she had purchased from a passing peddler. Chambersburg, Pennsylvania, became the new home of the family. A year later, after purchasing his freedom, Samuel was able to join them. In Pennsylvania, Delaney pursued his study while still working to support his family. After walking 160 miles to Pittsburgh to attend Bethel Church School for Black People and Jefferson College, he earned a degree in Latin, Greek, and Classical Studies. As part of his medical education, he apprenticed with a number of abolitionist doctors. Activist's Diary Abolitionist actions in Pittsburgh included organizing the Vigilance Committee that relocated fugitives and helping to organize the Young Men's Literary and Moral Reform Society. Delaney also joined the Integrated Militia to protect the black community from white mob attacks. The Midwest, New Orleans, and Arkansas were all stops on his journey, which included a stop to the Choctaw Nation. He finally settled down and married Catherine Richards, the daughter of a wealthy businessman, in Arkansas in 1843. Eleven children were born to them. He returned to medicine, but he also established The Mystery, the first African-American newspaper to be published west of the Allegheny Mountains. It was because of the libel action Fiddler Johnson made, and won, against him that he had to sell the publication, which he had written about many sections of the anti-slavery movement. After five years of working together, Frederick Douglass and Delaney parted ways because they couldn't agree on the best method to fight the abolitionist movement. White resistance prompted Delaney to quit Harvard Medical College after his first term, despite him being one of the college's first three black students. In response, he returned to writing, releasing the origin and objects of ancient Freemasonry, its introduction into the United States and legitimacy among colored men, as well as a treatise on the possibility of black people returning to their homeland, the condition, elevation, emigration, and destiny of the colored people of United States politically considered. While in Nigeria in the mid-1850s, a group of African-American emigrants were able to secure land for themselves, as well as a passage to Central America and Canada. As a result of his explorations, Delaney penned the novel Blake, or The Huts of America, which details his findings. Delaney was encouraged by the Emancipation Proclamation, and he became involved in the Union Army's recruitment of African Americans, including his own son, Toussaint Louverture Delaney, who enlisted in the Massachusetts 54th Regiment. President Abraham Lincoln may have even met with him to discuss the potential of black officers commanding black troops as early as 1865. Delaney rose to the rank of major in the 104th Regiment of the United States Colored Troops during the American Civil War, becoming the military's highest-ranking African-American at the time. Delaney attempted to return to politics following the war. Life and Services of Martin R. Delaney, 1868 a pseudonymous autobiography of Delaney authored by a female journalist under the name of Frank A. Rowland, served as a stepping stone to sitting on the Republican State Executive Committee in South Carolina and competing for lieutenant governor. In spite of his support for African-American enterprise and success, he refused to endorse certain candidates if he did not believe they were qualified to represent their country. Wade Hampton was elected governor of South Carolina, and he was appointed a trial judge because of his support. When the black vote was suppressed, Delaney continued his emigration efforts as chairman of the Liberia Exodus Joint Stock Steamship Company's Finance Committee. Principia of Ethnology, The Origin of Races and Colors, with an Archaeological Compendium and Egyptian Civilization, from years of careful examination and inquiry, was published in 1879 and was intended as a source of pride for the African people. The family moved to Ohio in 1880, where his wife had been working as a seamstress so that he could start a medical practice and help pay for his children's tuition at Wilberforce College. 
I thank God for creating me a man, but Delaney praises him for making him a black man, wrote Frederick Douglass in a famous quotation about Delaney. Endings and Remains On January 24, 1885, Delaney succumbed to TB in Wilberforce, Ohio, and was buried there. An American Renaissance man, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. was the first African-American explorer and businessman to travel to Africa. He also served as a doctor and orator in the U.S. military before going on to serve in politics and being imprisoned for defrauding a local church. It is impossible to categorize Delaney as either conservative or radical, as historian Paul Gilroy put it, because of his political trajectory through abolitionism and emigrationism, from Republicans to Democrats. At Wilberforce University in Ohio a few months after the death of his writings, which could have further clarified his position on issues, a fire destroyed them. Thank you for listening in Audiobook Academy. Don't forget to subscribe and smash that like button for more content like this. See you in next video.